Hello everyone and welcome back to W Breaks. Today we're going to be taking a look at the brand new Lego Ideas Viking Village. Now this set released on October 1st here in the United States and it retails for 130 US dollars. Now we'll see here in this review, is it worth $130? Thank you all for stopping in. Make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed and let's get started with this review. Of course, taking a look at the box to start, you see that it is number 51 in the Lego Ideas line, and it has 2,103 pieces. I think the brown looks very good on the bottom of the box, but I am getting sick of the plain black 18 plus box art. I would love to see beautiful box arts and, and colors brought back into Lego boxes themselves. I think one thing that makes them so exciting is having a beautiful box to look at. And I just want to see moving forward into 2024, into 2025, us returning to the previous style of boxes because I think there's just a massive difference. Obviously you get a very good look at this set here overall. I think it looks very good. Around the side here is your basic information. And of course, over here on top, you see all four of your figures and you don't have a star minifigure, but a star shield, which is, you know, a little bit different there. You've got a shield, which is more important than the character, I guess. You get to see a good look at the whole set there. On the back, you've got some nice little details on the bottom there. And it shows you how you can open the whole thing up. And obviously, your little bit of information about Lego Ideas. Flipping it around to the side, you see a nice little area of the side of the Viking Village. And then, of course, you're back to the front. I do think the brown was a great option, if I did not say so already. All right. Without further ado, let's get into the minifigures. This is a great box. All right, and starting off with the first two minifigures here, I've got both of the girls. So we'll compare them, and then we'll compare the two guys. Obviously, I'm a big fan of the one on the right here, but there's a few different things I, I don't like and I do like between both of them. So first off, the Thor's hammer piece there on the girl on the left looks absolutely incredible. The printing on that looks excellent. And I love the torso and leg print for both of these minifigures. I think they both look excellent. They're both new to me. They could be previously released in that other Viking Creator 3-in-1 set, but I don't buy Creator 3-in-1. So, you know, they're new to me. I don't know if they're new overall. I'm, I'm not 100% on that, but they both look very good. I think the weapon choice is very good. The printing on that shield piece right there is excellent. I think all four accessories here are done very well. Perfect accessories for these minifigures. The face prints are fine. Um, let me show you the face print back here on this girl. I do not like that face print. I know that's a reuse because I know I have that print somewhere. I've seen something like it. But uh, yeah, definitely not my favorite there. But I think both of their main face prints here, I guess the girl on the left doesn't have a second one. But their main, her main face print here looks very good. Now here's where I'm going to get super critical. The girl on the left has extremely smooth Lego looking hair. It looks like a Lego minifigure's hair. It's very smooth, very shiny, whatever. Now the girl on the left here, well, I guess it's left, it would have been right before. So the blonde haired girl here, look how ridiculously detailed that hair piece is. That is crazy, the amount of detail that's in that hair. And so it just kinda, honestly, I love detail on minifigures, you know that, but it's at one at some point, you reach a level where it doesn't really feel like a Lego minifigure anymore, and they've definitely reached that level here for me. I think the hair piece is really cool, but I just think it's too detailed for a Lego minifigure, in my opinion. I would have preferred for them to smooth out part of it, maybe. Maybe just do some of the braids uh, around the top there. But I just, I feel like that is really, really detailed. And I just think it's overkill for a Lego minifigure. It's just... It, Part of me is like, it's really cool to be getting something that detailed. And part of me is like, it looks terrible. It, it just doesn't feel like Lego to me at all to be getting hair that detailed. Like, it's it's cool that it's that detailed. But at the same time, it just, it doesn't look right to me. I have so many mixed feelings about it. I just, I just don't know what to think about it. Leave a comment down below. Are you a fan of this hair piece or not? I just, I, I don't know how I feel about it. I just, I can't, it's just, it's weird, guys. It's it's weird. It, it's not Lego. Leave a comment down below. What do you think of that hairpiece? And finally, the two Viking guys here. They both look excellent. They've both got incredible printing there. Once again, not sure if it's brand new. It is brand new to me. So good enough for me. Uh, but like I said, it could have been in that Viking Creator 3-in-1 set. I'm not sure exactly what came in that set. 
Like I said, don't care about Creator 3 and 1 now. I did when I was like five years old, and that's basically it. So uh, it, it, leave down in the comment section below if these are new torsos or not. It just They're new to me, and I think they're super cool. All in all, weapons here are great. Love having an archer. Always love getting archers in sets. I think the sword accessory there is really nice. I love seeing it. I love getting more of them. You know, those were first introduced in the blacksmith shop back in 2021, I'm pretty sure. So love seeing more of those. Once again, shield print there. Excellent looking shield print. Both helmets look incredible. The armor selection there for the dude on the right is a very good selection. Obviously, neither of them have other face prints because the helmet is too short. But these are both incredible minifigures. I absolutely love them. Super, super, super fun. Super cool. Lego did an excellent job with both of these guys. All right. And here we are with the Viking Village. This is one heck of a set for 130 bucks. They absolutely nailed this thing in so many ways. As I was building, I was just like, man, this is this is designed very well. They put a lot of thought and effort into this. Some great, great design choices, some great techniques like the staircase here. I absolutely love the stone staircase up. I love the roof pieces here. Obviously, they're they're really under detailed, but I'm okay with that here. I think that it gives that straw feeling. This one's really detailed. This one's very underwhelming, but the nice arches up here at the top look very, very good. Same down here, how the, the points meet down there at that corner. They did an excellent job. So I'm going to take you up closer into all three little sections. So one, two, three, and we'll take a look at each of those sections kind of up close. And I'll show you exactly how we'll do that because it separates into three sections. So you see right there, well, that might not separate very good. As you see there, that's the first time I've separated it. I wanted a live reaction here on camera to separate it and showing you. And as you see your pins here, your connecting pieces just pulled out from down there. Obviously a quick fix, very, very simple, quick fix, but it's obviously not going to be too easy to take that apart without those coming apart every time. Let's see if it does it to this side as well. Oh, and by the way, these things fall off all the time, all the time. See, just a nice little pull right there. Yep. And look, all three of them popped right off onto here. Interesting guys. So it looks like Every time you want to separate these three pieces, these are all going to come off and you're going to have to individually replace all three of them over here. So decide where you want it on your shelf to carry it. Obviously, it's I feel pretty secure picking it up, you know, with the three modules together. But I would decide where you want it and then just place it down there instead of having to switch it around like this every time. Now, this isn't like the... Uh, the pirate set that was released early in the year. Why can I not? Eldorado. Eldorado Fortress. Where it was kind of modular. You could switch it all around. This is just... It sits how it sits. And that's how it is. So I hope you like the layout. Because that's how it goes. So let's just take a look at each of these modules individually. And then we'll come back together at the end. And take a look at all of it. Alright. So here we are with the first module. This is the Blacksmith shop module area and this is actually the smallest of the three but is still my favorite i think the most level of thought and design went into this section and i'll show you all my favorite points obviously we're going to start off here with the beautiful tree i think they did an excellent job with that a lot better than the other trees we've been seeing recently obviously it is not perfect it it's still got a lot of open spaces and i think they could definitely do better but this is a step in the right direction i think this is this looks good this this is definitely better and I want to take a look at the other tree real quick here. This one is definitely interesting. It uses those new fern pieces upside down to create the illusion of a tree. And then they just put some studs and a, and a cone on top and called it a miniature tree. I, I don't know. I don't know who designed this. It's, it is definitely an interesting choice, but, uh, it's something. It is something, you know, I, I don't even know. We, we don't even talk about that. Take a look at the detail around the structure here. I think it, this looks very clean, very crisp, very, very well done. And, of course, you've got your chimney around here to the side. Uh, very good. I, no complaints. I think that looks excellent from the back there. And, of course, you've got this little feature, which we'll look at in a second. 
And then this is a printed piece. Everything in this set was printed. Very, very nice. All right, let's take a look at the inside. Flip this off right there. You just pull right up. It's not connected to anything. You just kind of got to shimmy it in there. Shimmy, shimmy, shimmy. And he sits right in there. So it's nice that it's not stuck on anything. I think that works well. Obviously, you've got the smoke beam coming out of the top of there. You've got some extra weapons and tools down here. A hammer. One of the classic, or not really classic, but more 2015 style swords. 2013 in that era. I think they were first introduced with the Lego Lord of the Rings theme for Aragorn. And then they used them later on for Lego Castle after Kingdoms retired. These came out after Lego Kingdom, so it is in a more modern Lego era within the last decade or, or 11 years, if you're going to go a little bit over. Very, very good little selection there. You've got a small, I want to say that's supposed to be the top of an anvil there on top of that stump. Uh, as you see the bellow over here for the fire, if you just do this, you'll crank up your fire in there, which is, that's fine, you know, it's a feature, it's fine. And then looking back at the wall, you've got another style of Viking helmet sitting there, which is very, very cool. You've got a little candle and, of course, an unprinted shield for your blacksmith girl to print or paint, I guess, not print. <laughs> She's going to be painting it with that paintbrush. So very cool little Easter egg in there for her. Very nice little thing in the set. Really, really like this one. Now, I do think it is interesting that the roof is designed differently than the other two. As you see here, this one is like this. And now we'll talk about the next module, obviously. This one and the other one is designed with this sort of hay top with the studs exposed, where this one is very smooth. So very interesting design choice for them to split it up into two different types. I don't know what the thought was there behind it. I definitely would have preferred all three to be the same, and I would have preferred them all to look like this because I think this one looks the best. I think it's smooth, it's clean, crisp, and it matches the rest of the aesthetic. Now here's the interesting design choice I'm, I'm looking at here. As you see, this structure is designed with these two colors of brown. You've got the medium nougat here, and then you've got the regular reddish brown. Now here, the main structure is designed with traditional reddish brown, and then dark brown. And then the last structure is designed with dark tan and dark brown. Very inconsistent. Now, I don't think it looks bad when it's all combined. But it is very interesting that it is all completely inconsistent with each other. You typically don't see that. Now, obviously, you've got your main section here, your main house here for the Vikings, flipping it around. Obviously, you've got some nice stonework here around the back. I think they did a really good job kind of using some snot techniques there. It looks decent. And I really like the way this window looks here from the outside. The inside, is, it's a little bit rougher, but from right there, it looks good. Uh, I love these windows here using the Samurai X top. Actually, this was first introduced back in 2013 with the Stone Warriors and the Lego Ninjago theme. So before it was the Samurai X top, it was the Stone Warriors top back then. All in all, I think the structure looks good. I just I'm confused why they changed up everything from the first module. Everything is changed here. For the second module, I just think it's a very, very interesting design choice. Obviously, going up to the top, let me extend the camera up here a little bit for you so you can see that top area. Looks very good. I love this, how they finished it off up here. Except, once again, I'm very confused why they even added these pieces here and didn't add brown to the edge of it. As you see, all the rest of the tan hay sort of tops are edged with brown. You see it here. You see it over here. There's a little bit on the top of the other one, but most of it is all edged with brown, especially on this structure. So I'm confused why they just left that open and just kind of left it incomplete. I could have easily seen them just add in some brown tiles around the side. All in all, though, it, it does look good. I do like the designs here up at the top using the armor pieces, which were previously just used for the Dragon Form Ninja in LEGO Ninjago back in 2022. So it is very interesting to be seeing all of these different pieces being brought in for another theme in a completely different use. Very, very interesting. Obviously here, moving to the structure, the doors do open up here so you can get inside. I think these doors look pretty decent. And then removing this is very simple. You just lift off. Once again, it's not connected to anything. It just sits right on there, which I think is, I, I really like that actually. You don't have to worry about pushing down too hard to make sure it's set in you just lay it right on top and it fits perfectly 
All right, now taking a look at the inside here, let me lift this up for you. You see you've got a nice roasting pot there in the center for them to cook food. We've got a shield, axe, and spear on the wall. Flipping around, you see the throne there. And with the throne in the way, you can't really see the window, but it is uneven here, of course. That's just what you would expect using that type of piece. It is a very old style of piece, but I love that it's still in production, and it has so many great uses. So keep doing that, Lego. It, it's just, I think this is the first time I've personally seen it used as a single window. Typically, you see it used as a double. I know we have with the castles, and we did with Ninjago City Gardens. Just interesting to see it like this. But like I said, I do really love getting those pieces. Obviously, we've got the nice banners there on the wall. And then around the side, you've got a small little very, very thin table with half of a plate with a chicken wing and a silver cup. All in all, excellent job. Once again, pieces are printed there at the front, so you don't have to worry about applying stickers. Once again, ridiculous and a $130 set. I don't have to apply stickers, but in my $650 UCS Venator, I'm still applying stickers. So once again... Serious problems that Lego really needs to get a hold of because it's pathetic in 2023 moving into 2024. All right. And yes, before any of you comment, the UCS Venator is sitting on a box back there that it, I got it in at the Lego store. They gave it to me in the shipping box. And yes, it is sitting back there. I don't have a spot for it right now. So it just sits in front of my desk on that cardboard box so I can look at it. But uh, yeah, it's just... Yes, it is sitting back on a cardboard box. Okay, guys. Okay. Now, moving on here to the final structure. All right. So, I got the camera raised up in a new position so you can see everything good. Obviously, you've got your main section of the dock here, which I think they did a really good job with. I think that looks nice. Love this tower here. I love how they staggered the tiles on the off stud just so that you can fit it in there perfectly i think that looks very very good i really love how that looks up there i think that's a great little outpost and of course your archer which i love doing i love putting archers in towers love doing it with my castle love doing it here you just fit him right up in there however you want to set him up he looks excellent up there in the tower absolutely love him this does fall off very very easily i wish there was a, a more stable way to put it on there but you just got to be careful with it so you don't lose it. I dropped it like three times already. I actually dropped it back into the box with, yeah, it's, yeah, it, I dropped it so many times, guys. And it, it, yes, it took me a long time to find it. It was sitting inside the box. So embarrassing W bricks moment, but uh, thankfully it is there. Obviously, you've got the nice printed shield there. Of course, same one that we saw with the girl Viking at the start. Beautiful looking structure here again, but once again, completely different color scheme used for it. They've got this style of roof with the windows, of course, and then dark brown. Where did dark tan even come from? There was the dark tan is what's used for the ground here. And so I was extremely confused why they were using it on the main structure. But this does have a really good feature in it, and it's how they did these windows. Look how good that is. Actually, let me let me get that up closer for you. Look how excellent that looks. You just put some clip pieces on there and fold those right down. I think they did an excellent job on that. Obviously, you've got a little copper cave underneath there if you want to have your minifigure go mine out down there. But from the outside, it looks very good. We'll, we'll take a look in a second here from this side. But there is something on the back I have to talk about, and it is raising these barrels up. I love the look of the barrels on their side. It is a, it's a classic look. You, you know, that's how they stored barrels. But why is it got to look like that from the back? Could they have not done anything? Look, you know, they did so much work on the rock work here to try to make this look good. And then they give us this and they just, they slap a an inverted white slope tile on there. And they're like, eh, that's good. Call it quits, guys. You know, it's fine. No one's going to notice. Everyone's going to notice that. You cannot look at that thing from the back. I highly recommend putting this on a shelf somewhere so you don't see that. Because it, it takes you out of the moment, man. It just, it doesn't look anything like that. It's just ridiculous. It just looks so bad. I, it, it doesn't compare to the rest of the set at all. It just completely takes you out of the moment. Looking up top here, how do you even, I don't even know how you take this top off. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, I don't even know how you take that off. I know the back, oh, another dumb W bricks moment. You just take the back off right here. That's right. Look right inside there. You got a nice little path out to the rope bridge. And then you've got some food down there. That is a dark orange pumpkin. That's like not even dark orange. That's just a, a very strange color in there. Uh, it, it doesn't look like the regular dark orange. It's a little bit darker than that here in person. Uh, 
Very, very cool piece. Got some cherries back in there as well. Obviously, you just pop this right on here. See, guys, I'm learning as I go with you guys. I uh, Apparently, I, I didn't even think. You know what? I guess that's what happens when you record your stuff later at night. Dumb W breaks today. Otherwise, you've got the fish down there at the bottom on the little hook. I think it looks good. Only other thing I'm going to talk about here is the flag and how they did this using the dragon's toothpiece. Or I guess this was introduced back in 2017, actually, with the Lego Ninjago Vermilion Warriors. That's when this piece was introduced to my knowledge. I don't think it came out before that. Very interesting piece usage there to create the white part of the flag there. I think it does look really good, though. I think from back afar, it, it looks just like it matches with the flag, which I think they, you know, it, it, it works. It's, it's a completely new concept, and I really like it. I guess one more thing, too. The rope bridge was a pain to put together. Um, this, this, the material they use, the rope here that they use to connect it is, is very hard rubber, but at the same time, it's really squishy. And so these, when they clipped into it, they got stuck exactly where I put it. So I had to manually bend it really hard to get it turned around to match up when I connected this side. It was just an absolute pain to put together. Um, but the end result does look very, very good. And to connect three, all three modules, just like I took them apart, it's just a very quick and simple pop it together like that, click into place, and then this one just comes right up and pops into place as well. And boom, you've got the gorgeous looking Viking Village. All right, and here we are at the end of the video, guys. Of course, the question on all of your minds, is it worth 130 US dollars? 100%, guys. 100%. This is definitely worth $130. I think this might actually be one of the best Lego idea sets we've ever seen. I, I love the classic fishing store and I also love the blacksmith shop, of course, but this one is just absolutely incredible. Typically, when it comes to Lego idea sets, I think that the fan model looks 100% more enticing and exciting than what Lego reveals and releases. I think what the fans usually make looks a lot better. But in this case, I think Lego took a concept that I think originally looked very good and I was very excited for. And I think they made it even better. I think that they executed this set absolutely flawlessly, in my opinion. I think Obviously, you know, of course, there's some little things that I'd nitpick, like the hair, like the, the backwards barrels but those little minuscule things are not going to take over my complete thoughts of a set i think that this set is a 10 out of 10 set and i rarely give sets 10 out of 10 i think that you know if if this is your type of thing if you're into more medieval stuff like i am i absolutely love medieval culture and and medieval uh architecture especially the architecture i love learning all about the medieval times i think it's super fascinating so for me to study up on the vikings and and get to build some of their structures it's just a ton of fun for me absolutely loved it if you're a history buffer you know you love back in those medieval times you love to study that then i think you would definitely love this set as a kid i think you would definitely love this set as well i, I see a lot of kids having a lot of fun playing with this thing and if you're just a collector looking for something pretty on a shelf this thing looks absolutely stunning from afar it'll it, i've had it sitting on my desk for about four days built now and uh, i cannot wait to set it over on my shelf with my other medieval sets that I have built at the moment. I just think this is an absolutely incredible set. I would have liked to see another minifigure, but honestly, four, these four fill the gaps really well. I think it's not like Eldorado Fortress where I felt like there, there could have been more minifigures because there was so much space to fill. But with this one, I feel like the four minifigures fill the space well. She goes in the blacksmith, your chieftain or your jarl goes out front, your archer goes in the tower, and your other girl can walk up the pathway or walk down here. There's there's a good amount of space for your four minifigures to live in. And I think, you know, that's what you like to see. I highly recommend picking this set up if you can find it. It was a pain for me to get it. I did uh, get a little ticket for it, a slip, because I was third in line at the Lego store. So I was lucky enough to get this on October 1st. But, it, it you know, if you can get your hands on this, I highly recommend it, guys. It, 
I don't know if it's out st out of stock at the moment, but I think that this will definitely be a great Christmas present for kids, adults. I, I assume dads and would really, really love this set. Uh, I'll be making a Christmas video upcoming, what I think you should buy for your family as a big Lego fan. Uh, if your family's into it, your dad, your mom, your sister, your brother, whatever, I will leave a video coming out soon for everything you need to know for Christmas in 2023. What is the best stuff to get? Thank you all for watching so much. I, I really greatly appreciate it. I'm on that road to being monetized. We are inching closer and closer to becoming a monetized YouTube channel. So I thank each and every one of you that are here supporting every video. You all mean the absolute world to me. Thank you all very much. Make sure to like and subscribe if you have not already. I would greatly appreciate it. And I'll see you all later on W Bricks. Thank <laughs> you.